you hear that music and you see those graphics, you know it is time for the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series beaming out of the United States, the Northeast, the East Coast, the greater New York area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Southern New England coast between New York and Boston. I'm your host, Jim Masters. Thanks so much for joining us. It's great to have you with us. Wherever you're watching around the world, our international audience, our lovely viewers watching from all across the United States and Canada, we say hello to you, uh, our North American audience. Also, all that watch in South America. We've got a lot of folks that watch throughout South America. We absolutely love it, that. And our friends that watch throughout Europe and Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, we welcome you regardless of what the time zone is. I know that many of you watch when the shows are live and you watch overseas or down under and it's, uh, you know, crazy times. So in Australia, it's already tomorrow. <laughs> Some of you watch like at two in the morning when we're live here. It's 8 p.m. Eastern right now while the show is live. How's everybody doing today? Busy day for me as always uh, on the air, on radio, multiple radio shows, uh, preparing for a uh, big TV shoot tomorrow morning we have with the guest has flown in, you know, professional hat and TV radio. And, um, an amazing guest joining us here from Hollywood. Yes, from Los Angeles. He's originally from Northern California, but makes his home in LA. He's an actor, a writer, a director, movie producer, filmmaker as well. We're talking about Richard Ryan. Joining us in just a minute, he's got some exciting news. There's some great new films and a whole host of cool things that he's working on. He's excited to be here. He's a big fan of our show. He knew all about it, said, hey, I want to come on the show. I want to enjoy some of that JMS levity. And I want to tell you about some of the cool things, Jim, that I'm working on. And I said, Come on down, kind of like <laughs> they say on the prices, right? Come on down. And uh, and he's here and he's joining us again from LA. He's all pumped. We were testing audio and video, making sure everything is good. But uh, Richard is here. And again, he's working on a lot of cool projects. And I'm uh, going to tell you a little bit about him actor, producer, director, writer, known for his versatility, dedication. Wide range as an actor, is the founder of Ox Films, most widely recognized in the role of Joseph Markham in Art of Deception. The role of Brad Jenkins in Fortune 500 Men also looms large in his filmography. He recently worked with Jonathan Majors in the latest Army commercial, and to date, Richard has made 17 short films, three feature films, and he's been in a total of 55 film and television projects. He grew up in El Dorado Hills, California, and I was just in that area on a TV show that I was telling him. And he played sports and began theater and acting for Cameron High School. And to date, he loves being in the film industry and uh, he loves playing sports and music and so much more. If uh, he's not doing that, he's making movies and uh, bringing people in to uh, cast and crew to make them as well. Good to have you with us. If this is your first time here, we welcome you. Uh, you can actually chat with us during the show and the show is live or on the air as it is right now. Our JMS Lovety Hall chat room is open and available. So when you subscribe to the YouTube channel, it takes a village. It uh, doesn't cost anything to do that. Uh, Gym Masters TV is the channel. That's where hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes, almost uh, thousands of episodes of our series are located. You can comment in the Jameis Lovety Hall chat room when you subscribe to the YouTube channel, which costs nothing. You can chat with each other. Many of you are doing that right now. And there's a lot of regulars. Sometimes you see their names, the regulars, Lovety Squad viewers here at JMS. And a lot of new people will join us so you can interact with this broadcast. I'm a very interactive host, and this is an interactive talk show series, not really an interview show per se. These are conversations. This is a talk show series, and we interact with all of you and with our guests. So with all that said, <laughs> how you doing? Hope everybody's doing well. And again, we welcome Richard joining us here. We've got a lot of cool things to show you, to talk about. We've got visuals and video and all kinds of cool stuff. But he is all ready to go. And he, again, is coming to us from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, what I thought was really cool is when we were playing our theme song, he was uh, bopping around. I think we've got another fan for our show open. You kind of like that, huh? <laughs> Dancing to the Gym Master Show theme open. <laughs> well, Jim, it's an honor to be on. I really appreciate you giving... Um opportunities and people to, to uh, communicate about who they are and and take uh any questions from from the public and i love 
communicating and talking to people and having discussions. And I, I love the introduction, what you do with the music. Um, what really caught my eye also was the, the, the visuals of the introduction. Now, what, was that you drawing the introduction? Because I, I love that animation you did what we did was we actually uh i had it professionally produced it cost a pretty penny <laughs> and but it was produced by uh the music we selected so the music is ours the theme song but the first part where you see the drawing happening yeah and then the second part where you see the animation and the name the gym master show sort of pops out on the screen and the microphone shakes a little bit those are actually two separate elements that were blended together. The first part, um, it, it was actually a professional cartoonist and illustrator here on the East Coast who uh, happened to be working on an Aerosmith album at the same time he was working on our our show open and the graphics. And he designed the graphics and everything, the logo and all. And yeah. then his daughter, he's not an animator, he's an illustrator, but his daughter is an animator and she's done work with The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon and all. So she took the logo, mm -hmm. um, which was stagnant, and then she brought it to life and has it pop out as animation. So we blended the two uh, and then, of course, with our theme song and boom, there it is. <laughs> well, like I said, it's uh, it takes a village and it is definitely a collaborative effort on um, I, no, nothing is small, e even, even the logos, even deciding the music. I mean, it's all, it, 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 it takes a lot of thought. It takes multiple days. It, it takes a team because you want to put your best foot forward and, um, and represent yeah. what you do, your vision in the highest light. So yeah, that, that, that's that, right. Exactly. What, you deserve that to do that. People deserve to see the best that you can offer and it creates more opportunities for everybody it's a win-win for everybody it really does yeah and it sort of you know gives people an idea of, of what's coming and the vibe positive vibe and the theme that we're gonna have a good time and uh they'll enjoy themselves when they watch the show it's just cool because we saw in the in the screen you were really moving to it oh yeah <laughs> i didn't know that yeah, you, so he's yeah, getting yeah. all warmed up this is cool <laughs> Uh, but you're not the only guest that does that. A lot of the guests we can see in the preview window, they're like rocking out oh, to sure. our theme music I'm as sure. it's it happening. It wasn't premeditated at all. It, it just felt right. You know, yeah. if you feel like moving, sometimes uh, that's what music Do does. It. Yeah. It, 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 uh, that's, it, so, I mean, art in general is fan I've always been drawn to art. Within us, there's always an expression. Yep. And we all have to express as a primal instinct. And, and to exercise and move as well, um, eat healthy. I always uh, move your body, get the blood pumping, get the, uh, the, 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 the brain cells circulating so you can operate and function the best that you can so you can be the best version that you can every single day and lead by example, whatever that is. And, and expression is so important and it, uh, it brings um, people together. Yes. Whether it be painting, whether it be music, or since the beginning of time, since Shakespeare, people just collaborating or just coming under one roof and, and enjoying themselves with, with entertainment and people expressing themselves and finding that thing that you have to express yourself, whether it be a painting, whether it be a book, whether it be um, a movie, it's very cool. And as you can see, it's just you just move. You can't help. It's built within us. So exactly. you just got to the belief. I like that ding that went off because that meant you were having an aha moment. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's Thank it. You. Just appreciate it. That's it. Yes. It's yeah. actually my tech, text messages. But <laughs> so <laughs> you are a, a fan of our show and what yeah. we've been doing here. And you reached out and said, I like what you're doing. I'd like to hop on and talk about what I do. And, and I said, absolutely, Richard, come on. We'll look at a date. We'll work it out and get you on here. And I appreciate that. I, I, I'm glad you appreciate it. And I appreciate you taking the time to say, hey, let's bring you on. Because I know, especially now, there's a lot of podcasts happening and, and, and the, the currency is, is information and providing information. And there's a lot of information to, to be, uh, 
to be put out there and provided. And I know a lot of people are doing amazing things and, and they want to voice, um, get, get heard and just uh, connect and, and and meet new people and uh, just keep the ball rolling. So it, it's just great to connect with somebody like you live in the flesh. I know you're an award-winning nationality, recognized television, radio, multimedia personality, presenter, host, journalist, and content creator. So, I mean, you've been doing it a long time. And uh, it's an honor to be here, and I really appreciate you opening up the doors for me. Uh, the door is open, and uh, as I always say, we'll keep the porch. I usually say it at the end of the show, but we'll keep the porch light on for you so you can come back, too. Yeah, I'll um, never leave it. You just keep that porch light on. Yeah, and porch light will be on. Oh. Uh, so uh, I, I was mentioning I was on a TV shoot up around Napa Valley and Sacramento and all up through Chico and great area. And uh, you hail originally from Northern California, right? Tell us about growing up in Northern California and some of the influences and inspirations in, in Northern California is beautiful. If you've never been there, folks, there's, there's Northern California and Southern California are two distinct places like Northern Nevada and southern nevada that you got the desert desert and southern and then you've got that beautiful high desert and the northern with uh, northern california what was the inspiration for you to uh, go into the arts and to go into film and and acting for you early on in school yeah well um growing up in northern california it was uh definitely appreciative of that and just being around family and friends that uh were supportive still are supportive was a great thing and um, spending time in Tahoe with having that right there. And um, my, my, my grandma brought our family home into the, uh, um, into our family about 40 years ago and, and, and up there. And uh, there was, um, and she, she was a true visionary as well. Uh, she wanted a, uh, there was a land a property, nothing on it. And she said, I want to build a house up there, had a vision. And people said no because it wasn't a, a a good area to build upon. And but she went forth with it, and um, and today it's just an amazing place, and it always has been. And I pulled a lot of inspiration from there. And um, my creative juices always always flew. Um, on on it was, it's five acres of just great land. Mm. Um, it, it's it's a great uh, great community up there. A lot of just real down to earth people, um, supportive. I, I played sports, uh, basketball, baseball, football, soccer, growing up, uh, some martial arts. And, um, I have always created like even five, five years old, even six years old, even whether it be, um, with family or friends, I would always rally the troops. I would like yeah. to say, whether it be with them or myself, just various games, I would make up games different sports games, um, games with the cars, just always had this want to create and, and just playing little characters and stuff. I would dress up like Santa Claus. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so in high school, um, freshman and sophomore year, actually I, I went to a private school called Sacramento Waldorf. Um, created by Rudolf Steiner, and it's a very good curriculum. It's um, art based. So um, I went to public school up until eighth grade. I graduated from Oak Ridge junior and senior year. I went back to public school, but um, at Sacramento Waldorf, it's art based. You read me choir, and, and I had to uh, take theater, and um, I, I performed on stage um, Shakespeare. And then one of the teachers came up to me and said, "This is what you need to do." I'm like, "I'm like what?" She's like, act. So I said, all right. So um, I acted as much as possible um, on theater in high school. And even when I went to Oak Ridge, I acted in uh, theater there. And there was a couple of film projects that I participated in and started auditioning in local auditions. And, and um, uh, my first year in college, I uh, took film class. I mean, in front of the camera and more Shakespeare. Any and, commercials or any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, a couple of little PSAs here and there. Um, nothing big. But I said I, I needed to, uh, to to move down to L.A. And um, I continued playing sports. I continued martial arts. And because that that always has uh, in, in, inspired me to 
to to be a part of um, a community of, of of athletics that push yourself in mm-hmm. towards the arts. So I had a really good balance with that. And I came from a, a military family, and um, and I, I have a lot of, of pride of, of like being from a military family. And I, I take I I, uh, I put a lot of I guess I had an act of like rallying the troops and it just sort of came right. to me. Yeah. Combining it with art. It's a lot of and, tenacity, a lot of stamina. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, cause my dad, he, uh, but while growing up, he said, um, he fought so I didn't have to, but it's still within me just, just on set and outside of set just to honor, um, and, and a lot of gratefulness of, of my family and, and friends and just all the cast and the crew that have always partaked in any one of my productions and saw the vision that I was creating. Um, and, and I take a lot of honor in that. So I've always wanted to create opportunities for myself and others. So when I got down to L.A., I just after three months off auditioning, I wanted to make movies. So I started making movies. I got a camera um, before I knew anything. Uh, I started doing extra work. So I learned a lot from there. And Aaron Spicer was my acting coach, amazing acting coach. He taught me a lot. So I was just super inspired. And I said, you know, I'm going to continue doing what I've always done. So I rallied the troops, got the cast, the crew, got the camera, started editing on my own, found the locations and just learned as I went and, um, I, it's a beautiful business because it make a process of making a movie because you're offering a, a, a platform so you can bring others on board and you can learn from them and, and vice versa. And it's a collaborative effort and it, it, it encompasses all trades. You can be a scientist, you can be, um, in, you can, um, uh, an accountant, a doctor, um, a historian, just whatever it is. And um, even, even a military, a former, um, former military, there's a lot of jobs there on set for that. If you were to um, make a movie about military, you, you want the real deal. You want to make sure the movements are correct. And it's a perk of the job. It's mm. a, lot, a lot of hours, but next thing you know, Hey, you can live kind of by curiously or just really in the moment as, as, as much as you can just, uh, amongst individuals who, who, um, who served in the military and you can learn from them and you can collaborate with them. Like, uh, Jonathan majors. I had a good opportunity to, to work, um, alongside with him just a month ago. We were in Malibu. Mm. We had critiques on, and that was a national commercial, actually that that uh, that played on March 12th during March Madness. But it was an absolute honor to just run, just to have that environment be created by the best of the best. You you have yeah. the military, you have the wardrobe uh, department, you have the the, the props, uh, making sure the guns are correct. And um, just the real deal, makeup, and, and just creating that real life sc- scenario. There was uh, there was explosions. There was mortars going off. You had like fifty of, of us running through the beach of, of Malibu. It was a reenactment of Normandy, but it was like all your training, all your preparation, and it, it's just during that moment, and, and you get to use it, and, and be in that moment with everybody else. Just that synchronicity. And it just makes everything worth it because it was an honor and it was, it was beautiful and it's inspiring to even get better and learn more and keep growing because I want to be a part of more productions with amazing people like this, just just uh, performing at the, the top. Exactly right. And, and as you do that and you meet people and more people get in to the mix, then that's what really starts to happen, which is extraordinary. You start working with some of the same people again, but then there's new people that want to be a part of it. Did you ever uh, wrangle with the two different worlds of producer, filmmaker, actor, 
Uh, is there one that sort of speaks to your heart more, producer, director, writer, or being the performer, being the actor? It's it's been a constant wrangling from from the very beginning, because it, it's I, I produced them, I directed them, I wrote them, I acted them, I edited them. So I just sort of started out doing that. So it's like you have the planning phase, and then on set you have to execute. So it's this it's this constant behind the camera, then in front of the camera, behind the camera, then in front of the camera, and it's sort of really good training because you sort of those moments where you're pulled out of the character, you sort of have to get back into the character right then and there. And when you do have that opportunity, you just focus completely on the character. It's just a breath of fresh air because it, but you have an understanding of uh, how the whole production works, right. how, how every single individual on a production, how it's all interconnected. In, in the the best productions are um, having just a respect for each department and and um, but I've always loved creating so when, when I when I live just experience in life I'm walking around I see locations I have different ideas I'm like oh I want to shoot that I want I want to shoot that I have this idea I want to create I want this and that but um, there's this side there's like yeah, I want to create that thing now, but I also want to act in it as well. But I love also being a part of other people's visions in the world. And it's an absolute honor to, to be asked if I, when I do get the opportunity to, to play a character and I completely get to just, A, I'm grateful because they didn't have to, they don't have to ask me, but um, when they do, there's that element of it. But also I can just completely disconnect from the world of producing and directing and writing, act all the nuts and bolts and this and that. Because with producing, it's like, yeah, it's fun directing, but there's a lot of nuts and bolts that you just do because you have to do it and you have to get through it to complete the mission. But when it comes to acting, it's like everything's all set up and I can, and, and I can just completely live in the moment uh, in, in the character and let that training kick in and um, just trust everybody around me that, that they got it. And uh, because in life you go through experience, you, you live, you look at yourself in the mirror, you, you break down elements in, in different situations of people and, 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 and you want to be able to justify it by having a work environment such as you being on set, living in the moment as a character, doing the research, it's fulfilling and it's 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 an amazing euphoria type of type of, of, of moment. Yeah. And so first and foremost, I'm an actor. I I, I love it. I love psychology. I love breaking down or just kind of people and just producing and directing aspect of it. So I always have like a, um, a project and there's so many great TV shows and movies out there also. And, but it's kind of like a pressure cooker because you mm -hmm. want to perform at your best that you can all the time as an actor. So what do you need to do outside of, um, outside of set to, so you can be the best version that you can be to get, the job and and to 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 um to translate on screen the best that you can so it can work and um you want to take your time also when it comes to the producing aspect of it to to develop the script properly go through the proper cha uh, chain to get the story great get those relationships have it make sense um Great story, great script. That's number one. And then just all the other production elements kind of fall into place. But it force is a pressure cooker to, to really take a look at yourself um, from a NASA perspective, say, how can I be better? How, how can I essentially you're competing with yourself every single yeah. day, but mm -hmm. in a way we're sort of competing with others also, because since the beginning of time, it's just we're in a, more of a civilized just environment that we're in today it's an evolved species and 
But at the end of the day, it's like just very primal. Everybody's trying to trying to eat. So every, there's a sense of competition there. But it's a, it's a, it's a good competition because you always want to be the best you can be and, and steel, uh, steel, sharpen steel. Yeah, exactly right. Do you also do the casting as well? Um, I, I, I've been, I, I did most of the casting, correct. And, um, but my, uh, the latest feature film Art of deception, well, fortune 500, man, I had a casting director, but I, I always made the final decisions and, um, art of deception, our latest feature film, which you can see on the poster back there, you can check out right now on Amazon prime. If you go to oxfilms.us, you can see all my movies. But um, but Jackie, the the producer, the other producer, just beautiful, just talented, amazing singer, dancer. I'm I'm just baffled how she's not, you know, just getting uh, thirty million dollars a picture because that's how much talent she has. But she and I casted for our deception because we were both the producers and we didn't have a cast director this time around and. But that's the thing, too. You know, it's like I don't want anybody to slip through the cracks. And there's a lot of talent out there. And those who don't have a top agent that's really picking up the phone and, and going for it. Yeah. And a lot of those a lot of talent out there is unnoticed. And I don't want to um, like have a casting director filter too much. Like I want to see everybody. I want to I want to find that gem. And is I would think like every producer and director, casting director just – wants to find that hidden gem out there so yeah we we, we uh we casted this one uh, together jack and i part deception that's fantastic you know you mentioned uh some of the others too and uh, we do have actually uh some footage here that has been sent which i think is really fantastic and uh what was the very first one that you created the very first film that you did <laughs> The very first film that I did was Glass. And, and that was wild because, you, you know, um, um, I, I have to, so Chad, Chad Avakian, right? My, my, my sister's former, uh, former boyfriend. He's like, I, I draw a little bit of inspiration from him because he said, if you want to do something, just do a lot of it. Just keep doing it. So at that point, I'm like, let me pick up a camera and just go for it. So it, the whole thing was just sort of improvised. And we had a camera, we had the microphone and just we went for it. And all of a sudden I had like all this footage. I didn't know what to do with it. And I'm like, oh, now what? So he's like, do, do a storyboard. So I did a storyboard and then put it together and then edit it a certain way. And then but after that. But uh, but but that was that was the first one. Then then the second one, I, I had the shot list. I had I, you, you get better each time. Then I had the shot list. I had everything broken down, and then we executed. But the first one, that that was wild. That was a blast. That's fantastic. That is really really cool. You sent along some great footage here. Um, Let's see. Well, we have Art of Deception. We have that. We're going to show that in a second. But we've got the uh, the Man Trailer Final. Do you want to have us show that one? Tell us a little oh. bit about that. Um, which one? Fortune 500 Man, you said? Yeah. Yeah, Fortune 500 Man was great. That yeah. was actually my uh, my first feature film. That was the first and, one. Yeah, just I did a couple shorts, got in the feature. I said, hey, I, I want to just extend – the shoot dates extend the look or the amount of days you shoot expand the locations expand the people that you work with and so i wanted to create a feature and um so i i, I wanted to again give opportunities to other actors and and create uh, and, and and more people to hear yes and um it it really i caught a lot of inspiration from from uh for, from uh from my like my process is oh, like karma, greed. You have a dream, go for it. What happens if you get distracted? So these elements that I, I want to that I want to explore, and then just real life stuff that happens, and then I 
I, I um, expand upon it with uh, with creativity or if I if I see something else a shot or whatever it is. So it's sort of a, a collected thing. And at that time, I was inspired to do Fortune 500 Man, Fortune 500 Man. And it was about uh, my character, Brad Jenkins. He, he um, goes to um, Los Angeles to pursue the, his dream to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And then so he, he got down there and um, there was some unlikely things that happened that tested him on his journey and um, it was up to him to sort of take it all in and to do then what uh, what he feels like he needs to do. Uh, midway, I, I was thinking like not to give too much away, but if you run the trailer and and uh, if you if you want to watch it, I, I highly recommend it because it's a really good movie. It's a crime action drama, and it was a really good. It was it was fun. It was a great learning process. It was a fun shoot. How long did it take to, uh, you know, when you first thought of the initial idea and put that down on paper to completion? What was that process like? So for that one, I just wanted to just go. Yeah. So, right. so I, I wrote I wrote the script in like a week. I had wow. a, cons a consulting writer, um, Michael Marcelin. He, he touched it up a little bit because um, he, he, he was uh, – he has a lot of really good experience and he's a professional as well. Yeah, yeah. So we collaborated for a, a few weeks and um, I got the funding. And then from there, I just started finding the locations and, and uh, put out a, an ad on Craigslist actually for crew and uh, put out a, a create um, Michael, who was Michael Sultan writer was the casting director as well. So we just sort of went and then three months of planning yeah we shot it and we shot every weekend and it was just so cool you know i shot, i did the shot list the storyboards found the locations and and there was a couple locations that 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 didn't go through and a couple actors that dropped out but then it happens yeah it happens but but i i'm so thrilled and just amazed by just the 17 short films and the two features one of them being uh, Fortune 500 Man, and even Art of Deception, everybody showed up on time, ready to work, and they saw something within me because I said, hey, this is my vision, and they believed in it, and just like I believed in them too. And I said, I, I want this to truly work. I, I want this truly because you're in it for it to be something that you can um, continue having a career uh, advancement because of it, because you said I worked on a, a Richard Bryant project. So yeah, there was, there was amazing scenes and I learned so much. And then uh, post-production and got a little sticky, but uh, post-production is tough. And um, it is but, right. Yeah. Cause a lot of times you go into a production, you don't even know before you go through the whole process, you don't even know, just like life, you don't even know what to expect. You just have this vision, you go for it, stuff happens. Um, it's not always gonna be pretty, but you you, you, uh, you bob and weave, you learn, you evolve, and uh, you put out the best project possible with the great team. Now with the, uh, the military uh, upbringing, when everybody reports to the set in the morning, do they have to start with 50 push-ups? <laughs> to get the juices flowing. <laughs> All right, come you know, on. It's funny. <laughs> that, that's, well, Art of Deception, the last project, um, Jackie actually took the reins on that, where she was like, "All right, everybody, let's do push-ups, let's do jumping jacks," because sometimes, a lot of times, like even as, especially after lunch, the energies drop a little bit, but you got it. Yes. Just, just, just keep the keep the momentum, keep the spirits high, keep it going. Yeah. Um, it was not a requirement, but what was a requirement was <laughs> during Fortune 500, man. And I thought it was all good, everything was fine because that's what I ate. I ate whites and granola bars and 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 
and that was the the craft service for my first feature film. <laughs> but it was just very, um, yeah. So, but yeah, I, I I actually encourage like myself. My my I always um, work out in outside of set and right once you get on set obviously you want to conserve energy but um but yeah. i always have to my actors feel like like for example boss he we uh we flew him out here from amsterdam it was his first time out he played uh um uh, uh sci- <clears throat> deputy director of the science and technology department cool of the cia and i thought um it would be good for his character to, to do some training like that, like do push-ups and jump, jumping jacks and just a regimen out. So, so I encouraged it. I not necessarily on set because every actor has their own process to get into the character. And I, I don't, I don't want to mess with that, but outside of set, I'm like, let's check out your character. You're, 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 uh, you're working on the CIA. Um, you probably had a, had a history of um, the lifestyle getting up to that point, which, which incorporates um, working out and push-ups, and yeah. it, it just, it does something for your body. Yeah. But also more importantly, it does something for your mind too. It's how you carry yourself. Right. It's how you deal with situations if they're, if they're uh, stressful situations. And right. Yeah. So what do you do? What's part of your, like for me, I cycle, uh, play tennis and I love baseball and uh, and we do a lot of hiking and walking, but because we're on the coast, the East Coast here, and grew up near the ocean, and we're just a couple blocks from it, uh, which this audience knows. I've said it multiple times. I'm an ocean person, so swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing, walking in it, floating in it, whatever it takes to get me in and near the ocean, mm-hmm. I'm I'm at home when I'm near it and and in it, physically active in it. You're. You know, you've got uh, the ocean not far either. Uh, are you an ocean person too, and and other things? I love that you do that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big ocean guy. Hiking, going on the stairs, and um, uh, going up and down the dunes. Just like the, all all these alternative exercises outside of the regular routine, and um, which is very important. And you want to keep it fresh. You you, you want to keep the mind body and and spirit intact in you to be um just always excited about your workouts and keeping it fresh so right now my i I go through a lot of different workouts and exercise routines trying to find my best um my favorite one at at this time right here so what i'll do is i'll uh i'm training with with uh with ricky keyless He's a four-time title belt winner. He he's amazing. He's been boxing since he was six. So I trained with him for about an hour, and it's so amazing because like learning, like the the, the true foundation in, in technical aspects. Because as he says, and it's important to have even good form. So, but before I get into what he says, then then I go into and do twenty laps in the pool because I love to to swim. It's great. It leans you out. Yeah, it, the mind, body, and soul. Just for me, like it just um, makes my 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 mind um, feel just, yeah. just at uh, ease and at peace and content and clear yeah. and yeah. Blood pumping, and then I hit the weights, and then I'm looking into after that doing yoga or Muay Thai. Um, but yeah, Ricky Keelis is it says uh, so, and, and it's a good motto to live by actually in life in general because he, he says, you, you know, you can have all this strength, but unless you know how to how to uh, from a technical aspect utilize it properly, um, it, without a solid foundation, your strength comes out like a squirt gun. You know, pew pew pew. Yeah, just you a know? little bit. Yeah, little yeah, squirts. You, you want to have your strength and come out like a cannon. Right. So make sure you have the foundation in, in the technical aspects correct. And even when you're in the weight room, lifting weights, you want good form. There's no ego. You know, the, like forget about the weight. Forget about how hard you think you're hitting the bag or how well you're doing with uh, 
your kicks or punches or whatever it is, just take it back to the fun fundamentals, even with writing, even, even with life in general, no matter what the aspect is, it's just like, take it back to the fundamentals, learn that foundation and, and just build because there, there's no such thing as a destination. Every single day we're learning, we're evolving, we're growing. There's infinite amount of space out there and That's things right. we don't know. And what's exciting is learning all those things that we don't know. And, and uh, it just opens up the world and we can, we can pass knowledge to people and receive more knowledge as well. And it's a beautiful thing. So Absolutely. that's right now. Cool stuff. Love it. That's cool. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, we've got some great stuff to show everybody. If you're just joining us, everybody, I'm your host, Jim Masters. We are live worldwide on the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Our special guest is actor, movie producer, writer, director, founder of Ox Films, Richard Ryan is here from Los Angeles, California, telling us about his background, but also his passions and some of the cool projects that he's working on. And uh, he's excited to be here. We're excited to have him here. And here is, um, so this is Fortune 500, man. This is the trailer. We're going to take a look at this. This is very cool. I got a chance to preview this earlier. Uh, we've got some cool stuff to show you. And one of the main new things, folks, is Art of Deception. We've got that movie trailer. We're going to show you that in just a second, too. But take a look at this, and then we'll be back. I want this kid destroyed to a place where he can never recover. Do you understand? On the back of this picture is Brad's address. I need you to become his friend, his best friend. Take him in like he's one of your own. If I find out my money's not being utilized properly, it's going to make me mad. And believe me, you don't want to make me mad. Do I make myself clear? My name is Brad Jenkins, and at the tender age of 21, I took all my ambitions, big dreams, and determination to the city of Angeles, Los Angeles, to pursue my dream to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. So, Chris, this guy, Brad Jenkins, oh, he'd make a damn good employee. No. I've looked over his files, and there seems to be something missing. Are you talking about the same Brad Jenkins I interviewed yesterday? I would suggest you spread the word to anyone who wants to hire him, or there will be problems. Do I make myself clear? Crystal. What do you say? You need the money. It's better than being out there in the street, man. Cheers. Cheers. To happiness and success. <laughs> One step at a time. One step at a time. Brad. Tell me where did it is. Where did it, where did it all That is really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, what I'm looking at too, because you know, like we do uh, working in these industries, I'm also yeah. looking at the production value and that has really high production value. The lighting, the scenes, just the quality of the images, sure. like spare no expense. It's really Thank slickly done. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you think so. And I've never had a luxurious budget, so I've always had to be creative and, and put in the, the true work finding the, the, the best location, the best actors, um, just planning it properly the, 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 with the shot list, the schedule, the storyboard. So when everybody comes to set, they, um, they're working within a professional environment and um, sort of like a close knit family. I've never had like huge crews, but I think it creates more of an intimate bond that, that you know each other and, um, you have a respect um, level for one another because when, when challenges arise, you, everybody goes the extra mile to, to figure out the best solution. And it was just, it was so amazing. Like it was my first feature. So like. Congratulations on that. Because, you know, yeah. People are already and, asking where, yeah, can they, was, where can they see it? Well, well right now I'm, I'm re-releasing it. So, oh, cool. um, so that's exciting. I'm, I'm, it's a different platforms right now as we speak. So I'm going to re-release it, but, uh, but it, it was a great shoot. So we shot it. It was yeah. 2010. But like at that time, um, did. Wow. Art split. 
if Mark Smith, like he's worked on three Antonio Banderas movies. He's executive producer of The Outpost over there in the UK with Scott yeah. Eastwood. And yeah. he did five years at, in, in uh, American Gladiators. So so he was a part of the project. He, says, he said yes is one of the, uh, the actors. And um, he, he works for Idris Elba. Or he works with Idris Elba and is really good friends with him. So for him to say like, yeah, I, I want to be a part of this project. And it was a very good character for him. And then uh, Nick Hawes actually had a, had a, a Nick Hawk. He goes by right now, has had a lot of success over the years. And, um, and uh, show times, show um, gigolos, and has had several books and has done several other projects as well. And he has a lot of really good things to say these days. And he is now as a man. And it's cool, like, and Brian Dodds, he was in there. He, he was on NCIS and a lot of different projects. So he's very grateful to work with so many people. And it's amazing, kind of cool, too, because, like, you start out with actors. You start out with crew. And over the years, stuff happens. And a lot of yeah. people, they just like, hey, this isn't for me. They go some somewhere else. But then those who do stick it out, there's this like unspoken uh, common bond. Like, hey, we went through trials and tribulations and challenges. We have a certain understanding and we're still here. And uh, it's a certain level of respect and it's cool to, to just rise up together and still see um, where, where life takes everybody. So cool. We've got another treat for our audience and folks commenting, loving what they just saw, that teaser clip there. This is uh, Natural, is it Natural Demise, the trailer? Natural Demise. Tell us about that. So this was my second feature film. I just got into production right after Fortune 500, man. I went, I said, hey, I want to shoot a horror, a horror film. But I don't want to be the lead actor. I want to do like the Hitchcock thing where well, more than the Hitchcock thing, giving myself a cameo. I did a couple of scenes, but I, I wanted to do a horror, fil horror film yeah. because um, my, my grandma, again, Five Acres, my creative sanctuary, grew up creating there. Very inspiring, beautiful location to, to shoot on. And which I've done a couple of short films with too. And my, my family has, has property up there too. And so it's free locations. And, and I wanted to get creative with the blood and, um, and explore this genre. Yeah. And I love creating different, creating, exploring genres. So that was the inspiration um, really when it comes to that. And we shot it in 12 days and again, rallied. 12 troops. days, really? <laughs> yeah. Oops. Local cast from Sacramento bought, brought my buddy Daniel Jew up from uh, another great actor that I started out with Fortune 500 Man. Said, "Hey, you're my assistant director. You're going to be in the project." And then um, we're just it, it was it was like it was wild. We have an ongoing joke where well, we shot like 18 hour days, and then at the time he was shoot he was staying at my mom's guest house, and um, we got like two hours of sleep every night. So I would. I would greet him at my mom's guest house, the casita, and uh, I with coffee, and and we we just had so much passion, and energy, and just just running on fumes, and just pure love and passion, and and, and coffee, and uh, we put a bunch of sugar in that coffee, and yeah, just, it was it was such a good time shooting in my hometown though, and. It was shooting, we shot in my hometown in Art of Deception too, in Tahoe as well. Just, it, it just a lot of magical moments there too. And uh, got into post production and made it work. And now every day I'm just pushing it out there and marketing it as much as possible so we can all rise together and yeah. get the movie seen by the world. Is it is it like a psychological thriller? So this one. No, I do love psychological thrillers, actually. Yeah, and me too. Honestly, there's always an element of that in, in, in my projects. There, there was more thriller, and um, the the, the uh, Jesse, the main character, and it's cool because I got to uh, get my 13 year old cousin at the time in the movie too. So working with him and um, was cool too. So he played the middle child there was 
the the younger version, the middle version, or the the um, the, the main killer. There was the adult version that we see of him, the the six year old version, and the thirteen year old version. But anyway, he created this chip um, to. I don't want to give too much away, but yeah. but he 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 created this uh, this this the the chip to sort of create his perfect family, and so there was thriller, there was a lot of gore, it was a thrasher, it was the the a group of, of workers on community service coming together, they're working out there on the farm. Um, you got to some spring breakers, the girls came, they meet, they mix and mingle, and then you got this psychopath on the on the loose. And, and the psychological aspect comes into play where, where we take a deep dive of, of how he got to that point to want to create his perfect family. And I always like to just play, go within the mind as much as possible because I think that's interesting. It's a good concept. Yeah, absolutely. And now with uh, the growth of AI, artificial intelligence, some of that might actually be coming good. to fruition. You might be on the cutting edge of reality <laughs> i you know you know it's interesting our, our imitates life and even with art of deception we, we produced it it came out in 2018 and it has to do with um the virus and a little bit about that type of thing so how so, unbelievable right <laughs> but natural demise was fun shoot though so that's where the inspiration came. so if you want tonight's winning lottery numbers richard might have them for you he's ahead of the game <laughs> Put it into existence, Jim. Put it into existence. Here is uh, the trailer. It's really cool. Natural Demise. Take a look, folks, here on the Jim Master Show. What are you reading, sweetie? Jesse Lincoln, world's best kept secret. How much longer before we get to wherever the hell it is we're going? A few young things, such as yourself, so beautiful. Shouldn't be out here all alone without a proper male companion. Thanks for the concern, but we can handle ourselves just fine. I'm Ray. Todd. What are you in for? Too many DUIs. You? I need to go to my grandmother's and get away from everything so I can study and get ahead. Holly does not have in the life suit you, by the way. Allie, be nice. No being in med school means there's no such thing as spring break. Fresh meat. I'm going to be barking up that tree again. So you said how many weeks was it that you put that together? So this was actually shot in 12 days. And 12 then, days. Wow. Yeah, in the post-production, it was like about a year. But uh, wow. Yeah, that's cool, huh? Yeah, it was very cool. It was it was very cool. And then um, post production, you learn a lot too. And it just really um, going through that phase of just making it better and enhancing the story, the script, and then just going into fixing the mistakes that you made. Right. Exactly. The shoot and rushing the development process, but you learn from that, and it, it showed it showed me, and it should show each filmmaker that if, if they do. Um, accomplish the mission and, 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 and finish the movie and then get on to the sales and distribution aspect of it, really understanding um, if you want to have a smooth production and post-production, you have to develop the movie properly and reverse engineer it to make your life a lot, uh, make, just make it a, a better, smooth process. But it's all good. I'm very grateful. Absolutely. And of course, Art of Deception, which is uh, another baby of yours. How did this whole idea, and we've got a cool trailer for this. How did this whole idea come about? So I had a treatment that I, um, that I wrote several years ago. And then 
I, I wasn't going to make um, another feature or a short. I was just going to focus completely on acting. But then um, I met I met Jackie Nova, and and, she, and we were just uh, like, hey, let's make a movie. And then I said, I have this idea. I've been through the process of making a movie. And, and Jackie, she's a she's a great actress, and um, she's my partner in crime. And uh, and and. We, we just got to it and then we, we started developing it, creating the shot list, the storyboards and um, started making the phone calls and looking at different uh, locations um, after the script was finished because we, we wanted to create um, a, a film that can really showcase our strengths. And um, uh, it was a lot of, it was very challenging and very fun shoot. It was a fantastic shoot. I know that the, the the smart thing to do is kind of shoot, like write a script and within your budget and it ends up being like a couple of different locations. And um, for this movie, it, it wasn't the case. It was a lot of locations, and but it was it took us on a big time journey. And like we were in Tahoe, we shot in my hometown, El Dorado Hills. Um, my, my dad, uh, um, yeah, that, that's Tahoe. My dad barbecued for us when when we shot at his house. And if you look at Natural Demise, that was my mom's kitchen, and that was my grandma's property. So, How did they do with all the snow that Tahoe get? Did they get like four, five, six feet of snow recently in Tahoe? Where we saw that on the news, we're like, holy cow, everybody's yeah. buried. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just recently, yeah, it was just – a huge amount of snow unbelievable right yeah i've been going up my there my whole entire life my parents have a have a timeshare in tahoe and so I, i've been uh like um, accustomed to just seeing snow every single year and right. then like that and then eight years then um i was up there one year i said i need i love shooting dream sequences i said i need to shoot a dream sequence with snow and it needs to be an art of deception. That's what I do a lot of times. Like I'm like, I want, I need to shoot in that location. I need to shoot in that location. I need to shoot that idea, or then like a, like a puzzle. We just tie it all together. But right. but uh, so I, I envisioned it. I said, okay, I, I envision what we see, what the scene is today with the music, and um, so we as, as we began production in in 2013. Um, we were shooting, we were editing, we were again doing the, the, the development for the next weekend. Then it gets, we were pushing off the snow sequence, the dream sequence, because there wasn't snow in Tahoe for several years, actually. Um, and it was just like, what are we going to do? I need to finish this movie and it's not snowing up there and we have to shoot in Tahoe. And so we, uh, we, we shot the green screens snow. And then, but we only ended up using a, like one shot of that, but we ended up scrapping that because thank goodness it started dumping snow the year, I think it was like 2016 or something. And then we were, or 2017, I don't know, whatever the year was, it started dumping snow. And then I said, okay, we're going to do this for real. We're going to shoot in Tahoe. <clears throat> like I envisioned, this is our window. <clears throat> so it was a blizzard. Mm. Um, <clears throat> like leading up to that point. So there was this fresh powder and um, I, I didn't, for some reason, look at the weather report, but the day that we did shoot, it was this beautiful sunshiny day. And that was the beautiful sunshiny day that you saw. And it was like six of us, like troops that were rallied. We're going out there, we're trucking through the snow. We're gonna shoot this scene. It's a beautiful, amazing, crisp day. It looks fantastic. And then, um, and then that, and then we wrap for the day, but then we need to shoot a day number two, but that day number two, there was a big storm coming in. So we got out there in the morning the next day, but I said, wow, this is great because this is how I envision the scene. When there's a certain point, the music picks up the, the, the escalation of, of the scene picks up the dr drama. So so as the storm was coming in, we, we, we had to finish the, the couple of shots that, that, that we uh, picked, had to pick up from the previous day. But during where we picked it up, 
it was perfect time because then the snow or, or the wind was blowing Jackie's hair and you see the dark skies and then the scene ended. But then we go to see sequence two of the dream sequence and the storm was really coming in at that point. And then everybody was just like, are we going to continue shooting? We need to go around the, the, the mountains to the other side. And it's just very narrow road. And I'm like, yeah, of course we're, we're gonna we're gonna continue shooting this even even better yet because it's a blizzard. The storm's coming in. It's perfect for the scene. So we get out there, and it was such an amazing adventure. It was just like we're on this mission. It's an army, and, and we're doing it. So we get out there, and the, I mean it was a legit true winter storm coming in. And we 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 went down there. There was this big huge ice uh, black box of snow on the dock. And um, of where we shot on um, in on Lake Tahoe, and so we we took our shovels and we sort of got some of the snow out. And I had a shot list as always in my pocket. There was like sixteen shots that we needed to get. So we got the first shot, which showed the whole lake and the dock and me walking out. And then just the mist started coming in, and the gray and the the it started becoming more gray. And we were out there, we were just running and gunning. We got the shot, you know, pulled that, pulled it out. The shot was getting soaking wet. And we said, all right, <laughs> next shot, next shot, next shot, next just shot. Just in time, shot. right? Shots. Yeah. And it just, it was exactly how I envisioned. And it was exhilarating. It was amazing. And then we put the music to it. And it was just one of the most magical scenes, if the most magical scene and just surreal. Um, sequence that i ever shot it was fantastic we've got the trailer to art of deception we're going to take a look at that now it's a really cool gang and uh we'll be back with our special guest richard ryan is in the house here on the gym master show here is art of deception you should be proud of yourself stern you're about to be part of history the worst virus the u.s has seen since west nile and we already have a cure we've got fear out there sir people will be begging for the antidote i'm going to make arrangements for markham and his wife's termination this evening i don't know if he heard anything why would he leave in such a hurry then huh? something big's going down i can't explain over the phone but i need you to trust me there's a man in our house where's my wife I'm from the United States government, and if you're lying to me, you could be facing serious charges. I said I've never seen his face. You missed something, or he's really good at hiding things, because I guarantee you these two are not who they claim to be. Who are you? So what are you going to do? I don't know. Is that trying to save my wife and let the catastrophe happen anyway, or save billions of lives? Wow. <laughs> That's incredible, right? We all need to be in a big movie theater with popcorn and uh, huge screens. You know, interesting, the, the music too is really cool. Um, you Would you bring in certain people to create the music, the soundtrack, the scores? Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I, I work with a great composer in Italy, actually. He's worked on 150 projects projects right now he's won multiple awards uh, we won four music awards for this for this movie and the score um and just collaborating with him and just making sure the music was correct that's a huge um uh, part of the process that that i oh yeah it creates very, the feeling the mood yeah it, it, it evokes that feeling in the mood like, like you just said and um yeah it was awesome and I've just been really like just just the people who I found like I've 
worked with a lot of great people on Art of Deception too, just all over the world. The visual effects artists live in India and Egypt. And like I said, Simone Cilio, he, he's in Italy. And uh, worked with Patrick Girardi, a re-recording mixer. He's worked on a true veteran. I learned so much from him when it comes to, to post sound. And um, yeah, and then even Fortune 500 Man and Natural Demise, I found really good uh, musicians and I was able to have um, get their That's music incredible. To, to be used in my films, which was awesome. That's amazing. We had some other photos we want to show here too that you can maybe tell us. Tell us what we're seeing here, Richard. Oh yeah, so that's that's on the at the Landmark Region Theater in Westwood. That was our theatrical release, and uh, it played for for the weekend. And it was shown on the big screen, and sounds just really come to life in the visuals and just. Uh, um, taking it in and experiencing that moment uh, with with a lot of different people and having your your um, your project played, it's amazing. From left to right, there's Leon Van Wass. He's from Amsterdam, very talented. Jackie Nova, very talented, of course. There's me right there, and and, uh, and then Prince Toe. I um, I met him in college. Actually, we've been buddies ever since, and we've worked on about five projects together very cool here's some uh scene footage too it's a cool one yeah that was uh that was a very cool scene very cool scene we had the camera in the boat and um yeah it was, it was just amazing being out there in a gorgeous sunny day in tahoe that's shooting, on the lake right yeah right on the lake yeah then camera was in there expensive camera expensive mm -hmm. lens yeah and it was myself and jack and then two so you would be a producer that would say expensive camera expensive lens a, a producer would say that because he knows the costs and what it yeah you know, yeah you're everybody right everybody hang right. on to that lens and hang on to that camera really tight <laughs> yeah, yeah and you know what's funny though in that aspect that scene right there like i was just completely in director and actor mode um and, and just like kind of just a uh, funny story um it, my, my dad actually he he never misses a chance to go up to tahoe and um he was actually up there with us and he's on the the producing staff as well and um i didn't realize that he really wanted to get in that boat mm, yeah I don't doubt it, right? So he he just saw that camera on the boat with us, and I'm driving it, and how much of a liability that is. But luckily, that camera and nobody went overboard, and um, which is great because our director of photography he actually almost went in. And you know, with production, you can get carried away sometimes. Like me, guilty of sin and. Uh, safety first, really, I, I like to just put that out there for all the actors and filmmakers because the psychological Absolutely. aspect, the psychological aspect, it's like you get in the zone, you're like, let's get the shot, you're in this world, you're making a movie, but there's outside circumstances of, of reality that if or you don't anything. take the proper uh, safety precautions, accidents do yeah. happen, and we, we right. have to be aware of that going into it so everybody can remain safe. Um, what, first and yeah. foremost, people force the equipment. Because any extra cost you don't want in on a production, no. you do not. <laughs> so we were in a boat in Greece in the North Aegean Sea, and we were filming for a television series, and we were by Samothraki Island, which is about seven miles from Turkey, and there were these open sort of caves that were in the, the mountain, the island. So we were on a boat, and the camera crew was with us, and I was, you know, host and talent. So because I was at the head of the boat and the camera crew was here and audio was here, uh, I was the at the head of the boat. So you saw the shot of me going in with the boat into this sort of cave with the beautiful blue, greenish, turquoise water. The camera crew, because they were on this side, couldn't necessarily get in front. So they handed me the GoPro 
and they said, Jim, you know, we need some shots of what it looks like from your angle, you know, by the water, entering the cave since you are there. And it was amazing because, you know, I held on to that GoPro, you know, probably tighter than I do the Bible. <laughs> because if there was any rogue wave or anything, you know, and, I, and then, of course, you know, with shots, you have to back out and come back in. And then you got to take another angle and another angle, another angle. And then there was another shoot in Belize and they were using a drone that, you know, they wanted to use the drones to get shots of everybody from the drone and the beautiful island of Belize, which is beautiful. And the drone decides to have a mind of its own and it just goes right towards the jungle and disappears. Oh, and gee. Went deep into the thick of the jungle and crashed and disappeared. And nobody, oh. nobody said that they wanted to go into the jungle in Belize and retrieve it. They just said, oh, it's, it's a goner. Everything. It's a goner. You know, it's, uh, we'll get another yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, get another one for sure. I almost lost a drone out there in Tahoe. I was just flying it and then it was going out of batteries and I couldn't find it. And then I pressed the home button and luckily it came back before it ran out of batteries. But yeah, sometimes, but yeah, yeah it can, it, if it goes over water or certain things, it can just lose signal or, and I think they've made them better and better with that. In the beginning, they were a little tricky here and there, but, uh, it could be. Yeah, it could be true. And then for, that's awesome that you're able to go out there and shoot at, at yeah. those exotic locations. And um, that's one of the perks of the job. It just leads you to so many great locations. Yeah, we were in Venice and we were in uh, Amsterdam and we were in Germany and a lot of other cool places. Death Valley, which is really fantastic. Okay. I mean, just all over the place. Here's, uh, here's some more shots. It's a cool one. Tell us about what's happening here. So that is an art of deception. And I play a scientist, the former military. And that is uh, the, the project that we were working on. It's a, it's a chip. And um, that was me holding it up to the light, just making sure if it was fit, if it's done. Cool and, and that's the observing from the room that I was working on, on the, the, I was working on the chip and I was observing just, uh, uh, Leon Van Wass's character, um, direct director of the CIA, Roland Smith and, and his partner testing the chip. And due to the circumstances, I was not allowed in that room, even though I'm the one who worked on it the whole time. I was observing what was going on very closely. Reminding people that Art of Deception, you said was 2018. And that's just yes. before everything that went on with the pandemic. How exactly. uncanny that is, huh? Yeah, yeah, very, very, very. And um, yeah, it was, it was. It, it was interesting because it has it had an element of that. You have the the virus that's out there, and the there is a lot of talk of what the truth is behind it, and a lot of different possibilities and scenarios. And at the end of the day, it's like who really knows the truth? But it's good to explore. And um, I wish up until I mean we we capitalized on a little a little bit, but not to the extent that I feel that we could have capitalized on it. But I'm working f like nonstop to capitalize on it uh, of a success to bring major success um, to more countries and have our deception because it's it's played on it's sold to thirty international territories so far and it's uh, circulating um, um, here in this in uh north america but the the more the better absolutely it, it right a really, really good movie that has a really good story another cool shot what's happening here richard yeah so i'm running from four cia agents that saw me in a bank 
withdrawing some money. Yeah. And that bank actually is in my hometown. And that was a very cool shoot because it's, it's my hometown. And we had a lot of onlookers saying what's going on. Kind of like what's going on. I remember here. him from high school and now he's a thief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a film, folks. It's a film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we have family there. We had a motorcycle there. And I'm glad they, they signed off there. Um, and, uh, that is cool, yeah, huh? Securing that location. It's kind of cool filming, you know, in your, your hometown. That just that whole sort of scenario is amazing. Um, oh, yeah. Very cool. Look at this yeah. shot. Yeah, that was actually uh, in Malibu. We were uh, we were storming the beach of Normandy, reenacting World War II for the commercial that aired um, with Jonathan Majors on March 12th during March Madness. But that was a really cool in the moment shot, and those were the fatigues we were watching. And as you know, with, with productions, the high end productions, there's no knockoffs. Like somebody actually really wore that uniform so many yeah. actually really held that gun that was the real deal yeah well, yeah it's a cool shot very james dean in luck i appreciate it yeah that was a fun shoot and just uh one of the one of the many shoots that that you do as an actor yes right yep all the different looks and absolutely right Thanks for the awesome comparison, though. James Dean is definitely a legend. I would say, yeah, it's got that look, right? You know, absolutely. This is more. That looks a little bit more like the guy next door. Maybe he would be in like a Lifetime movie or Hallmark Channel or something, or in a rom com. You know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and then, Paul Reddy, you you, Jim Masters. I was actually up for a Lifetime movie. It was a really, really? Good character. I thought I was gonna get it, but I didn't. But it was an awesome. It was an It was a great audition. And that's cool. That's all you can do. Anything yeah. else is icing on. It really is. It's the icing on the cake. Absolutely. When you look at all this, this is incredible. What are some other things that you're working on as well uh, that you're excited about? Maybe you want to share with us, Richard. Yeah, so uh, right now I'm in development of my fourth feature film. It's called Remington. It incorporates mafia, military, and Wall Street. And um, just working on getting the script where it, it should be and it needs to be. And then um, I'm in development <coughs> of a four, of my uh, my next short film, actually. It's, uh, it's part two of the short film mini fridge and that actually was was directed by uh by jackie nova and uh we produced it together and she was in it and um, it's a really good it was it, it came i needed a mini fridge and then jackie had this idea and we were like let's make it into a sketch and it became a short film, and now we're going to make a, now we're developing a part two of it. But I also am in development, and it's a comedy, by the way. And you can see Mini Fridge as well as all the other short films that I made on oxfilms.us as far as the, the, the red carpet as Sony that, that we did for Art of Deception and Landmark Region Theater, the behind the scenes and all that. But Mini Fridge 2 um, is hilarious. It's coming together pretty nicely. Just working on the script on that one as well. And then uh, this other um, short film um, that I'm, that it's a, it's a, it, it incorporates Mars. So it'd be kind of cool to explore that genre of Mars and um, another um, film, another film that has to do with um, being on a different planet. So just always have the ideas and creative juices flowing. Who are some of the folks that you've always admired? You mentioned Hitchcock. Are there others that, you, you know, other producers, actors, directors over the years that really you've always looked up to or you've been inspired by? Oh, absolutely. I've always loved Quentin Tarantino and I'm definitely inspired by him. And um, since I was, Hitchcock too. I've, all, I've always really enjoyed his films, but I, I think also 
part, um, the reason for that is because I grew up watching a lot of Hitchcock just uh, mm. with my family. Rod which Serling, is, the uh, Twilight uh, Zone great. and all. Yeah. Oh, the Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, um, my dad grew up on Twilight Zone. So did my mom. They both loved the Twilight Zone. Yeah. And very clever and just. Yeah. It's we, incredible, uh, right? We did. Yeah, we were just watching, we were just doing a Twilight Zone marathon a few months ago when right. my dad and I. Probably New Year's yeah, Eve, yeah. usually they do it. Yeah. New Year's Eve, yeah. Sci-fi channel. Yeah, he was ahead of his yeah. time, Rod Serling, too. His observations of life and people and society and how we treat each other. Oh. And uh, right. he was ahead of his time with that because a lot of what he, those episodes are about are so true to form. And like with your movie, with Art of Deception, some of those th scenarios that Rod Serling put together in the Twilight Zone with the twisted, flipped ending, some of those things, yeah. you know, we are dealing with now in life. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's good to um, to explore in, in the possibilities and different circumstances that could happen and kind of play with the mind a little bit, get people to think. Right. And, um, impact yeah. people in a certain way. And exactly. And that, that's what, why people watch movies to, to listen to music, be inspired and to feel something. And um, history has a way of, of repeating itself a bit and just kind of thinking about just possibilities of yet to come and just different trends and and just put that creative hat on and just let it flow. Yeah. Like Absolutely. Absolutely right. Why do you love doing this? Why is this something that has uh, been a passion since you were a kid and you're you're really deep into? And obviously, you've got the the drive. I mentioned tenacity and stamina, and you have the passion and the love for creating the art, creating the movies, all different kinds, the genres that we looked in to today. But I'm sure you'll be doing other kinds of sci-fi and. Uh, it could be comedy, just a variety of different things as you continue to branch out and spread your wings. Uh, why do you love it so much? What, what, what is it about it that brings you great blessing and joy? So I, I just love creating just, just creating in general. It's something I grew up with and I, I still to this day um, love it. And now it's, it's a challenge too, because you, the, I'm inspired all the time because when I go through life and I, I go through different scenarios and, and uh, experience more and, and live more and see more and, and, um, I'm more aware of what I've done and what I can do. It's just really challenging and pushing yourself and to, to create uh, a new story and just create another situation where you're working with people that you want to work with and you're creating with them, you're learning from them and you're inspiring each other and uh, creating just something that was just, um, just a thought and, and yeah. not even thought coming from the soul and going through the process of, of being on set and the development aspect of it and, and post-production, making sure it's correct. And just going through the, it, it's just a really, it's just, I, I, I love the feeling. It's cool stuff, isn't it? And and to yeah. have people around just, you that support the vision, the dream, that are helping to get it to you know come to fruition, that's so yeah. important too. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. So I'm, I'm always finding out. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> always. It is major key. You you got to be passionate. You got to love. You got to find the reason, and it just keeps you focused. And it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like pure joy. And, and yeah, yeah, it's very cool. 
What is your hope? Uh, do you do you have a uh, you know like a five ten year plan? Are there things that are on that bucket list that you've got you know your eye on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just continue, just improving every single day, living pushing, life, pushing forward pushing forward, exploring what you're capable of and um, being, being, being the best that I can be and lead by example for, for uh, and, and help as much as I can with, with family and friends and community and uh, just have the opportunity to, to work with great people that are operating at, at their best. So, it in return can make me the, be the best that I can be. And we just giving each other a reason to, to keep moving forward. And, um, and, and just from that, just having showing up, having a good attitude all the time. Half the battle is just showing up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Not, every, not everybody does that. Just showing up is important. Showing up is, is important. And a lot of times like we, we do have to get out of our own way and, sometimes it's just as simple as that just show up have a good attitude and just from there just stuff happens in sort of an organic way but with that being said you have to always put your best foot forward and we all have that control to do that and use our own brain and control as much as we can and and just and, and just let our experience and our knowledge work for us and kind of step out of our own way. But, yeah. but we can absolutely control what we put in our body, what we can consume and, and we want to consume healthy, good stuff. And, um, we want to get out there and exercise, get sunlight, move the body, whether it be, um, taking hikes or cycling, dancing, just, uh, treating, treating yourself with, uh, um, with, 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 with kindness and, and health and, and in return, it's going to just allow you to be the best version that you can be for, for others only by example for them too. And you have a good attitude and in return, they'll have a good attitude and just sort of sh show them, um, just, just be the example of somebody else's, um, that somebody else can can have a takeaway to better their lives in a certain way. Exactly right, because you never know who's following, who's watching, and who's being inspired by the work that we do. And I'm sure you've had people come up to you, and sometimes it can even be a younger kid, you know, like a younger yeah. version of yourself, me, a younger version of me, and that kid comes up to you and they're they're looking up at you and they're inspired by what they see you doing. And maybe one day they want to do that too. And uh, that's that's the icing, the gravy too, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's very cool. Just, uh, I mean, that's the best. If, if, you, if, if somebody comes up to me and, you know, it says like, hey, I, I learned from you. I'm inspired by you and and, and that lights me up. That is a reassurement that I'm on the right uh, right path. And, and I just got to keep moving forward. And even on those days where you don't feel great and uh, you feel in a certain way, you just got to still put one step before the other and, and carry through your daily activities that, that you know um, that you need to do and be focused and make good and smart decisions and with that you're uh you're 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 gonna start feeling better because you you have a good sense of gratitude and attitude and mm -hmm. you're presenting that to the world you see that and it rubs off on that person and then it lifts their spirits up next thing you know you're having a great inspiring conversation talking about things and then it just you're like, hey, I want to, I want to now work out. I want to write something. Oh, I have this idea. Now you want to create and do something together, and you're just inspiring and feeding off of each other. And uh, if, if somebody comes up to me, it just fills me up with joy, 
and just uh, it inspires me to, to go the, the extra mile. Exactly right. That's uh, beautifully said. Yeah. And, and, you know, living it and doing it uh, as you are uh, is the key to it all. This was fantastic, Richard, really a fantastic conversation. You know, we we chatted for an hour and a half. Well, wow. you know, it, I know every guest says it never feels like that. It just goes along like, you know, butter and uh, in a conversational way and sort of zips by in a New York minute. We look at the clock. We're like, wow, an hour and 30. This was fantastic. It was a great conversation. It was great having an opportunity to have you stop by the show and talk about your inspirations and passions. Our viewers have been commenting throughout the show as well. We appreciate all of them. We've been slipping in some of their comments on the screen. And uh, it was great, you know, having an opportunity to meet you here. And, and I'm glad you reached out. And uh, we're going to definitely, as I mentioned at the top of the show, keep the porch light on for you and wish you continued. Uh, yeah, that porch light's on. <laughs> and and we wish you yeah, anytime I can come on back on, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, and if uh, I'm on a, if I'm sent out because I'm sent all over the place, but if I'm with the professional work, if I'm sent out to LA on a shoot or something, TV shoot or something, I'll I'll let you know, and maybe we can grab a bite for lunch or something. It'd be kind of cool, compare notes and chat. If you're here on the oh, East yeah. Coast, sure. if you're in you know sure. in the East Coast area, anywhere be you know New York area between New York, Boston, and all. Let me know. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you and the show met whatever expectations you had, Richard. Oh, yeah, it, it did. It did. And, and then some. It was a really good time. And again, it's an honor to, to be on your show and to be able to showcase a little bit of, of who I am. And, and, re, and just for, for all the listeners, thanks so much for tuning in. And Jim Masters, you're awesome, man. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. You'll love this line. My father has always, you know, you mentioned your folks and, and my folks too, very inspirational. We, we have a big family, both sides of the family, relatives and all, and everybody's close and and we're blessed with that. But I, seven, eight years old, I, my father giving this incredible sage adult-like advice to us and, I, and telling me, which I still hold you know, in my head today, because it, it does make sense. Jim, you know, I'm a, it's like seven, eight years old. And dad says, Jim, whenever anybody says something kind or nice to you, ask them to please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, all those good words, put that in writing and get that to management. <laughs> That's, uh, it's a cool yeah. thing because how true that is, right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> it, it really, you know. Uh, keep creating, my friend. This was awesome. And right. uh, let's let's definitely stay connected. Spread the word about our series, The Gym Master Show. If you know other folks you think would like to, to pop on and be guests, uh, you're out there in L.A. and Hollywood. Spread the word about our show and our series. We really appreciate that. And uh, somebody that pops yeah. in towards the latter part of the show. Uh, Mr. George Burns, the comedian, is here. <laughs> Burns. My aunt, there he is. Uh, he, uh, my aunt collected dolls. She was a big you got mega. It. Huh? <laughs> she she collected dolls, and um, one of my mother's sisters. You got any whole... questions? Oh uh, yes, um, George. Actually, he sends his love from himself and from Gracie. He's got his cigar which I know isn't too healthy, but uh, he's got his red pocket square. He hangs down below sort of as my associate producer with his martini. Um, he, he just is just saying he hopes that your longevity is at least as long as his was, you know, like 99, a hundred years. Uh, and you know, he's been, he oh, worked yeah. hard and he was in the thick of it. My aunt collected dolls, thousands of dollars worth of dolls. She had this room in her house in Connecticut with all these incredible collectible expensive dolls. And this through the family got passed down to me. So I showed it on the show once and everybody fell in love with it. So he pops on every once in a while to, uh, give his, uh, professional blessing. <laughs> George Burns, a legend George, passing on, it. uh, 
His blessing to you, Richard. <laughs> hey, do, do you, thank you. Thank, I'll, I'll take that blessing. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Does, does, uh, does George like uh, hip hop? Hip hop. You know, it? George was very. George was very very hip. Uh, George was very hip, and I I think you know he did a lot of soft shoe and vaudeville. So I think he, I think he, I think he likes everything. <laughs> I'm a big fan of music too. Like um, just growing up on jazz, my grandpa loved jazz. Oh, I love jazz. So, yeah, I love jazz. So did my mom and uh, my my dad. Just nice. And uh, I actually do rap and hip hop too. So if all you listeners, if if you want to check out Paradox, um, that's my latest single that's out there right now. And I Where can they see that? Is that on iTunes or Spotify or any of that? Yeah, so if you it's on Spotify, but also Spotify. if you go on my 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 YouTube channel, Richard Ryan, it's you there. can see it on there, as cool. well as my my YouTube channel, Ox Films Entertainment, and I also have a SoundCloud, also. The SoundCloud, and right? I, I cool tracks up, and these are my paintings, by the way. Are they really? Yeah, these are my paintings. I do I do abstract. Check it out. And, and this painting right here was inspired. Um, I was inspired by my mom to, to, to do this painting. She actually helped me out a little bit on this one. Do you sell them? What's that? Do you sell the paintings or are they in galleries? You know, uh, I haven't yet, but I'm going to start actually. I, I came across this person at a film festival actually, because I do a lot of, I go to a lot of film festivals, but she was selling her original paintings she scanned it and laminated it. So I'm thinking about doing that because I have like 25 or 30 different uh, paintings and, and drawings. And and uh, my, my process, it's kind of like I just do all these different strokes with colors and I get myself out of it. Out of, just I don't even think about it really. And then just I look at I take myself out of it and just images just pop out. And I kind of just, just go with it and, and just a, a monster or like um, uh, a girl or a guy or whatever the image is, a tooth, a shark. And, and I just sort of, um, that that's my process. Whatever flowing through you and out of you is then on the canvas. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool, cool approach. Yeah, really cool approach. Yeah, I appreciate it. And it approach to have a lot of times like of course you gotta be thoughtful and mindful and be aware of some of the things i mean everything that you do and um throughout throughout this journey but also we got to know when to just get our get out of our own way and, and just yeah. let the just the the soul just flow through us and guide us a lot of the times whether it be writing or a book or living and, that's um, all right that's it. Sometimes we do have to step out of our own way and just, you know, uh, keep going forward and, and allow, allow ourselves room to, to not only grow, but to breathe, which is really important too. Uh, and, and just sometimes you got to let it go, whatever it is, you just got to let it go and move forward and not fester because, uh, the clock waits for nobody. <laughs> it keeps ticking and the clock hands keep moving forward. So it's what we do. Like they say, you know, when you look at a tomb, we look at a tombstone, you have the birth and then you have the date of the passing. It's what we do with that dash in between the birth date and the end date. The dash in between is what matters. Yeah. That was years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very true. That's very it. True. Let it inspire you. Let it inspire you. Well, this was an inspiring conversation and entertaining as well, my friend. Thanks for stopping by, Richard. Really appreciate your uh, time and, uh, again, expressing everything you've expressed and showing us all the cool things you've been working on and continued success with it all. And uh, we hope to have you back soon. Spread the word, and it would be a pleasure, okay? Yeah, that will be fantastic. Thank you very much. And, and I'm grateful and appreciative of my family and friends in the community. And uh, let's just keep uh, rocking and rolling. Let the good times go. That's keep it. On, keep on going. 
And we hope uh, you'll keep watching the show as a viewer as well, the series and all the great guests we have on. And uh, and we really appreciate it. You Absolutely. be well, Richard. Yeah. You have nine episodes. Over 900 episodes. Yeah, almost like 950 or something almost in, yeah. in less than three years. <laughs> wow. That's moving. That's moving. That, that's that's cranking, isn't it? Yeah. That's <laughs> it really is. I would love to be, I would love to add to that. And you're getting up there with Joe Rogan. We're right okay. there. I tell you. Yeah. Right. And, and it's, and it's like a side, you know, I have my full-time day work in television radio and then this on it, you know, right now it's quarter to 10 at night and I we still have to eat dinner. So it's that kind of a process. And we do weekends. Sometimes we've done two shows on a weekend and, you know, it's just, I started it during the <laughs> pandemic and it was just really something that I wanted to do to connect with everybody and say hi. And I just took off from there, which has really been amazing. So, and having you on was great. It added to that, that uh, list, you know, the, the walk of fame on the gym master show per se. <laughs> yeah. Well, look you, you, will you be well, my friend? And uh, we'll talk again soon. Okay, Richard. All right. You be well. Awesome. All right. Well, I, I, I feel definitely honored, Jim, uh, to be on your show. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, it was an honor to have you here. And we will, uh, we will uh, chat again real soon. I was in the Air Force ROTC through school, which was a lot of, so we, we salute you. <laughs> oh, were you really? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was really, really cool. So okay, we salute yeah. you and Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and all that before that too. <laughs> I just did that whole, did that whole thing. Were you really? Uh, yeah, did the whole thing. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So you can survive out there. Yes. Hey, hey you, you, you might want to go out to the jungle and get that drone back. You can survive with all those Going to the jungle. Yeah. I did the, the alone drive in a rental car with Death Valley. That was cool. And yeah, maybe we'll go back and try to retrieve the drone in the jungle. But by now, it's probably been devoured by some yeah, yeah. strange animal, <laughs> yeah. an animal that they haven't even determined. Uh, what it is yet is probably yeah. eating it for lunch. Very true. Well, it'll be yeah. a reason to go on over there. Just to check it out. See if we get a signal. <laughs> yeah, we'll shoot something while we're at it. We'll film That's something. it. <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. You be well, okay? And uh, thanks okay. for all the time. And we'll chat again soon. Okay, Richard? Thank you for your time too, Jim. You have a great day. You too. Yeah. Take care now. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers, uh, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye now. Richard Ryan. Actor, movie producer, writer, director, founder of Ox Films. Here is that website. Again, check it out if you want to check out a lot of what we've shown here on this episode of our show. Really cool to have him here on the show. Learn about his passions and all the cool things that he's doing and has done. And again, uh, he's really passionate and he's, um, you know, he's a, he's a forward thinker and he's very, you can tell he's very determined and he's, uh, uh, he's just somebody who once he gets an idea, he wants to see it come to fruition and he'll do whatever he can to round up the troops, pun intended, to make it happen, which is cool. I, I'm similar in that way so I can relate to him. I understand, you know, these industries take that kind of blood, sweat and tears to pull things off. You know, one of the things I always tell everybody is, if it looks easy and it looks effortless, then the job has been taken care of. Uh, a job has been taken care of because really anything but easy and smooth is what's really going on behind the scenes. So when you watch things, whether it's movies or television or listen to music or whatever it is, and it seems just so you know smooth and easy, what is going on usually behind the scenes and all the preparation and just everything, technology and just getting it all together, formatting, uh, even with a show and a series like this, same thing. Uh, it takes a lot. And um, But if you're passionate about it and if you have a passion, you know, whatever it is you like to do in life, go with it, you know, go to it and then share it with the world. I say that all the time. Do what you love, love what you do, and that's a sweet spot, and you shall be blessed. Absolutely be blessed. There is, again, the uh, the website. Check it out. It's a really cool 
uh, very visual website. You'll enjoy that. Thanks, everybody. Maureen says, uh, great conversation with Richard. Thanks so much, Jim. Lovely hugs to all. To you as well, Maureen. Thanks for being with us. And Kathleen in New York City. Thanks, Jim. Great show. Have a great night. You too, Kathleen. Jen Barry in Pennsylvania. Good to see you as well. Jane watching in Sweden, 3.40 a.m. where she is. Wow. <laughs> She's always with us too. We love having you all here. Thanks again to Richard Ryan for stopping by the Jim Masters Show series. Check out all the great guests that we have. They are absolutely amazing. We've got so many cool people that uh, have been on our show and that are coming on our show. And if you missed any, they're all archived here on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. If you enjoyed this episode on the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, there is a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up, this episode and all the episodes you love. Drop a comment underneath the episode in the comment section. We would love that. That helps more people around the world to see the episode. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, and click the notification bell so you never miss any of the episodes of our series. Gang, as you know, we don't say goodbye around here. We say see you later. Ciao. Cheers. Moi loops. Slancha. Shalom. Avida Zane. Hasta la vista. Cheerio. Take care. Be well. Hajda. <laughs> And uh, we love you all and uh, take time for one another and take time for yourself. Really important to do that. This is your host, Jim Masters. Thanking you for your time this time till next time, right here on the Jim Masters Show live series. We'll see you soon. And thanks for all the time. Be well. Cheers. <laughs>